Hi, my name is Hannah Nicewanger, and I'm bringing you into my studio with my trusty assistant, Daisy, who is going to help us with uh, making a little demo on clay. I work primarily in clay. This is the space I work in. I recently converted a barn building into a studio um, for working in clay, and I'm going to show you how I make a butter dish. Um, a lot of my work is screen printed. Um, I make my own screen printing ink, so I use mason stains and CMC gum and mix up something that's the consistency of normal screen printing ink but works for printing on clay. And here I'm showing you how I use a flexible screen to print onto the exterior of the butter dish before putting it together. This is a multi-step process. Um, I first screen print each of the pieces of the butter dish. There are five pieces, but only four of them get screen printed. And um, in this case, I'm screen printing a pattern that I recently made with ferns. Um, I then form the base against a wooden mold I'm using a wooden mold and a piece of paper to keep the clay from sticking to the mold and I turn the printed slab upside down and use a rolling pin to flatten it and then a brayer for printmaking works great to shape that edge around and then I'm pressing my um, stamp into the bottom of it just to sign the piece. and. I use a sponge to just kind of clean up anything and then I'm going to flip it over onto a board and now the base of the butter dish is formed and just needs a little bit of finish work. The finish work is done with this little edging tool that I made um, out of a solo cup. A solo cup turns out to be a great tool to use for edging clay. It's just the right amount of stiffness of plastic and you can cut it with scissors and make this little tool that just rounds the edge and makes the piece feel more finished. It takes away that sharp cut edge. So I go around the base of the butter dish with the edging tool and then I'm going to finish with a sponge just to smooth it so that there's not any rough edges. And now the um, butter dish base is completed and my next task is to assemble the top of the butter dish. The top of the butter dish is still a little bit wet um, which means that I'm using a piece of paper just to protect the pattern. Um, I don't want to smudge it as I'm putting it together. I have to have my hands really dry and the paper can be a really great tool just to keep that pattern where it's supposed to be. I've got little slits in the ends little darts that helps to bring the shape of the butter dish together so that it's not just a sort of cylindrical form it has a little more interest to it and I'm trimming the edges also using the guide of this base that I formed the bottom of the butter dish against that makes it really easy for me to tell if my top is going to fit on that base but I don't have to build it on top of the wet clay and it is pretty wet so I'm using a heat gun to just dry it a little bit more. Now I'm going to use a scratching tool and just put the um, darts together. Um, I use water and this serrated rib um, to, to, to just scratch and score that edge and then again the paper to keep that pattern from smudging um, and the rolling pin the, the brayer again to um, join the edges. The brayer is a really nice addition to the ceramic tools because um, it provides a good amount of pressure without uh, smudging. So that's kind, it's kind of perfect. Um, and I'm a little bit struggling with getting it to sit on its base. Um, it doesn't keep wanting to pop off, but um, now I've got to put the ends on the butter dish. So I have to trim them just to make sure they fit. Um, there's a little variation from one butter dish to the next. Even though I'm using a template um, to cut all of the pieces, I still end up doing a certain amount of 
adjustment. I, I like to have a little bit of variation from one piece to the next, especially with something like this where no one's going to try to stack it in their cupboard like you would with plates. You want those to fit together, but the butter dish needs to just fit inside of its base. So it's a little more freeform than some of the objects that I make. Um, and again, with that, uh, the ends, I'm scratching and scoring, trimming each piece to fit it perfectly. And um, once I've got it all adjusted just so, then I can join the piece together and um, the butter dish top will be completed. Um, this actually takes <laughs> about 45 minutes, um, but I've speeded it up so that I don't um, bore everyone completely. Um, so I think this the process is it's it's pretty simple, but it's actually uh, slightly technically challenging to put together a printed slab object like this. And this is a freeform piece as opposed to the base, which was made against a mold. So again, there's like a little bit of a technical challenge to it. Um, now that the butter dish is finished on the outside, I can go in and finish the inside. And with the inside, I'm going to add um, a little coil on each of the ends. Um, I don't do this with most of my pieces, but in the case of the butter dish, there's more of a tendency to pull apart at the edges. And so I reinforce those seams pretty carefully. I don't want it to um, crack as it's drying. So I'm going to add that little tiny coil and then smooth it and really get it extremely well attached. Um, and once I've finished all of that coil adding on one end, I'm going to flip the butter dish around and work on adding a coil on the other end of the piece. I'm building with slabs. I do always have to pay attention to finishing those seams carefully. Um, I don't always add a coil, but I do always spend a fair amount of time cleaning up the inside of a piece as well as the edges just to make sure that everything holds together really well. Um, and I'll use that trimming edge tool on this piece as well on the bottom. Now my next step is to add a handle. I've made a hollow handle using a slab of clay and I have to shape it to fit the contour of the outside of the piece and then I have to do more slipping and scoring um, again using that serrated rib um, and I'll just join that handle right on to the top of the piece. At this point the butter dish is completed and ready for drying and the final step will be to paint it um, in the areas that are not printed. So here it's completed. And just to provide a sense of what this looks like when it's completed, this isn't the same pattern but here is a finished and fired example of the butter dish both closed and opened. Making my work is a multi-step process. The part I'm going to show you now is um, taking a printed and formed dinner plate and painting it. In this case, I'm adding an elk. I'm really interested in the way that the printed pattern pushes the fairly three-dimensional painted animal into a rather shallow depth of field. I spend quite a lot of time on the painting part of every piece. In this case, my plate is already printed with a pattern inspired by a William Morris design. I've made a, a version of it that's only pomegranates and branches and flowers. And when I printed the piece, I left an area unprinted using a stencil. I blocked out the shape of the elk's head. So you can see there's kind of a bare spot that I start with. After laying a ground of what's essentially a ceramic version of India ink. 
I then take a, a variety of pointed tools, in this case a little mini loop tool, but oftentimes a pin tool or other scratchy tool, and I scraffito into the surface of the clay. One of the things that I particularly love about working with clay as opposed to working on paper, which I also do a lot of, is that fact that you can modify the surface. Instead of having to use an eraser, I can actually make these little marks using a scratchy tool and sort of erase away and build a surface. And after I've done a fair amount of scraffito, I go back in with that ceramic India ink and I can layer another layer of, of depth to the animal. After I've finished painting the animal, I tend to do a little bit of edging of the piece. In this case, I'm putting a line around the outside of the plate just to kind of frame it slightly. I've gone back and forth about what the edges of my plates look like over the years. I used to put a lot of pattern on the edges to make a really significant frame. And lately I've been just putting this kind of minimal line. Sometimes I don't put any line, it sort of depends. And then the next step is to add wax resist where I don't want the next layer of color to actually adhere. So the wax resist is a little bit transparent. It's a little hard to see in this image, but you can kind of see that it's like a milky layer. And I'm just putting it down to block the parts of the drawing that I want to have stay whatever color they currently are. And then because when I screened the image, it didn't quite go all the way to the edge of the plate, I actually go back in and paint the, a continuation of the design. I could screen print the whole pattern, but I love the back and forth between the printing and the painting. So I tend to do a fair amount of modification of the printed area as well as painting the animal on. And then sometimes I print a second color layer or third color layer. In this case, I'm painting the second and third color into the background. So I'm adding red where the pomegranates are just to kind of accentuate them and I'll add yellow into the flowers in some places not everywhere but just to have a, a slightly more complicated final pattern image. I'm really interested in the juxtaposition of particular patterns and particular animals. In each of the pieces that I design I spend a lot of time thinking about which animal I'm going to combine with a particular pattern. So I'm finishing the final touches on this plate before it's ready to go into its first firing. Here's the plate completed, painted, printed, ready for firing. And here's what it's gonna look like when it's come through the firing and gotten a clear glaze on the background, but not on the animal itself. So the animal is matte and the glazed portion of the plate is shiny. One of the other things you'll notice that's changed about the plate since it's gotten fired is that what was pale purple is now deep cobalt blue. Thanks for joining me today. It was fun to share with you a few of the processes I use for making my work. And I've also completely exhausted my studio assistant, so it's time to wrap this up.